So you want to smell like wealth. You want to smell rich. You want to smell like you have a lot of money. Perhaps smell like more money than you actually have. You've come to the right place. Although I feel sorry for you. It's okay. You can feel sorry for me too. Because I'm in the same boat. Who doesn't want to smell wealthy? Now you might ask, what does that even mean? Well, it means absolutely nothing. That is not really the point of this video. If you know the series by now, you know that there's more than meets the title. There's a lot more. Today we're going to be focusing on one of the most expensive ingredients in perfumery, oud. Highly misunderstood. Let's dive into it a little bit. All right, guys. So for the next four minutes and 20 seconds, roughly, I'm going to go into some pretty in-depth information about oud. If you consider yourself someone who's genuinely interested in that, feel free to keep watching. But if you are influenced by the trends of social media, namely not being able to watch videos for more than a minute, no shame. But if you have trouble with that and you want to just skip to the good stuff, skip to the fragrances, go ahead and fast forward. I won't judge you, I promise. Seriously. But I'm hoping that you'll watch all the way through. I think it's pretty informative and it took me a long freaking time to edit all this information. But your choice. See you on the other side. Just some quick facts about oud. It's also known as agar wood. It comes from the agar tree, which is known to grow in several regions throughout the Eastern world, some of them being Cambodia, Laos, China, India, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, and the list goes on. The agar tree is an evergreen tropical tree, and on occasion it's attacked by this particular type of fungus, a parasitic mold which infects the heartwood of the tree. Now what the tree does to defend itself, it secretes this resin, a sticky, dark, aromatic resin. And once that starts to happen, this can change the color, the aroma, and even the composition of the tree as a whole. The heartwood begins to harden. This infection infects about 10% of agar trees. That's not a whole lot, but it's not a tiny bit either. And only about 2% of those trees actually reach full infection. The entire infection process can take up to 10 years sometimes. Now it's bad for the tree, of course, but it's good for us if we want to use the wood if we want to distill that wood into oil but to get the highest quality oil we gotta wait not to mention obtaining the oud for the use in perfumes is extremely time sensitive and very labor intensive all of this contributes to oud's rarity it's a very very precious ingredient the oud oil is extracted by either melting the hard resin or by distilling the wood i'm not going to go into those two processes because you'll be asleep by the time I'm done. But I recommend doing some research. Check it out. Now, sometimes trees are artificially wounded in order to provoke infection. While this does speed up the harvesting process, it typically yields a lower purity of the resin, resulting in lower quality. Pure oud oil is easily one of the most complex naturally occurring ingredients in perfumery without question, perhaps the most, honestly. The natural aroma of oud varies drastically. There's no one particular scent of oud, but in general, some of the facets are described as deep, warm, rich, dark, obviously woody, resinous, a little aromatic, maybe sweet, ambery, and especially animalic. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with atars, which are basically these very pure forms of the oud. I have two oils here. Unfortunately, I don't remember where this one came from. This one smells a little bit bitter, aromatic, maybe even a bit of green, but it does have this warm, not super sweet, ambery feel that is giving it a lot of depth. This is just one extracted oil. It was not blended with anything. I have another oil here that actually is labeled. It's from Arige Fragrance. And this one kind of smells like honey and cinnamon. It's gorgeous. It almost even has this cotton candy feel. It is deceptively sweet. You would not expect it. It definitely smells rich and resinous, not terribly woody, a little bit medicinal smelling. So again, all this to say, it can really vary. Now, as I said, oud is often misunderstood. It is presumed to be stinky, skanky, vile, and generally unwearable. Now, I will admit it can take some getting used to, depending on where it comes from and how it is used. But when it's masterfully blended, it adds something to a perfume that cannot be 
matched. Now, side note, as you could imagine, not all oud and perfumery is real. There are synthetic ouds, especially in commercial perfumery. As we said, oud is one of the most expensive ingredients. How expensive? Let's just say some of the purest oud oil can range from as low as $2,000 US to as much as $40,000 US for one kilogram. For all of my Westerners who don't know the metric system, because I don't, that's about 2.2 pounds. Two pounds for 40 grand. <clears throat> Synthetic oud is not a bad thing, so don't be alarmed by it, don't be deterred by it. It just means that a brand does not either want to or cannot spend and invest tens of thousands, if not more, dollars to get the ingredient to use it and then therefore charge you hundreds to thousands of dollars to buy it. It's usually good enough, but it's not the real thing. So let's move on to business here. We have some fragrances to talk about. As usual, I have three categories with three fragrances per category that makes a total of nine fragrances for those of you who struggle with your multiplication table. No shame. Each of these categories are split up from most accessible to least accessible. We have starting, you're new, welcome. We have intrigued, you're not completely new anymore, but you're still a little bit weary about dipping your toe, but you want to because you're bored of the other stuff. And then we have enthusiasts, you're ready for these real oud experiences. But you also might have to spend a little bit of money for them. This was such a hard video to put together. I got a lot of oud fragrances in my collection. I didn't realize it. So I have a ton of honorable mentions I could have put here. I only selected a few. I'm not going to really talk about them. Stuff you would expect to see. Tom Ford, Oud Wood, classic, as well as Oud Mineral. Love both of these fragrances. Zerzhoff Alexandria 2. This is one you probably don't know about. This is called Agar Plus Myrrh, one of the newest fragrances from Michael Malul. Actually really, really, really nice for being very wearable. Check out my review here. Also can't forget about one of my absolute favorites, but I've talked about it a lot, Oud Galore from Chris Collins. And one that is weirdly named, I think many people would say, from Creed is Royal Oud. They might as well have just called it Royal Wood or Royal Cedar. It mostly smells like dry, peppery cedar wood, but hey, they claim it's in there. Okay, so let's jump into the real list. First up from Precious Liquid is Oud Symphony. This is exactly what it sounds like. This is a symphony. Oh my gosh, this is so opulent. It's rich, it's fruity and sweet. I get this peach or apricot like juicy fruitiness, a little bit of an aromatic feel, some medicinal dry woody oud in there. Nowhere stinky, nowhere skanky, nothing like that. May not be the most natural oud to be honest, but smells very, very luxurious. You have to like a fruitier oud. It's really, really beautifully put together by Richard Herpin, wonderful perfumer. And it is not the cheapest fragrance, but again, I think it's very accessible, quite easy to wear and understand. So that's Oud Symphony. I do have a little discount code down below with Precious Liquid. Check it out if you wanna check out the brand. They got some wonderful stuff. Next one up is a very, very easy to wear oud fragrance. Again, may not be the most natural oud, but that's okay. Oud Tonic from The Gate. And this is one of those rare oud fragrances that is meant to be enjoyed in the warmer weather. Oud is known to be dark and heavy, but it's actually light and fresh and tonic-y. As per the name of this fragrance, Juniper Berry giving a sharp aromatic freshness to the scent. It is a little bit sweet and ambery, but mostly kind of made lighter and transparent by some fresher notes, maybe some citrus as well. Doesn't last a super long time, but it's a beautiful, luxurious fragrance to wear during the daytime when you wanna be a little fancier and you only need it for a few hours. For me, I get about five to six hours until I can't really detect it anymore around me, but your mileage may always vary. That is Oud Tonic from The Gate. This was sent to me by my friends at Fragrapedia House. Use the code LUX2023 to save some money. Final fragrance in the starter level is probably the cheapest fragrance in this entire video. From Latafa, we have Rog by Wood Intense. And what I'll say about this fragrance is, more importantly, I don't have a vast representation of Middle Eastern brands in this video. So I do apologize. It is a genre I've been looking to get more into. I do have two other fragrances coming later that are from Bonafide Middle Eastern brands but not all the ones that you're super familiar with, all the cheaper ones. I don't have a lot of experience with those. Swiss Arabian, I've smelled a few. Arabian Oud, I've smelled a few. Latafa, I've smelled a few, and obviously there's many more. But Ragba Wood Intense, very sweet. This is smoky caramel sugar, very brown smelling, almost brown sugary feel, with a slightly edgy Oud, but it is made very easy to understand, but you have to love sweetness. 
very, very sweet, almost dessert-like. So if you're not a fan of that, you're not gonna like this. It's quite strong as well, so you don't need much, otherwise you will choke yourself out. It doesn't dry down to smell the most natural to me. I think the first stages of it are a little bit more natural smelling than the dry down, which falls a little flat on my skin, kind of becomes a little one dimensional, but doesn't smell bad by any means. And it smells great for the price. That is Ragba Wood Intense from Latafa. In the intrigued category, you're intrigued. And here's your category. First one up here is Golden Oud from Amarud. There's several fragrances I could have selected from this house. This is from their, what they call elixir line. It is their more luxurious, more privé line. It is higher quality. It is more expensive as a result, but it is lovely. This is kind of almost in the line of the Ragba, but more refined. Nowhere near as robustly powerful. The Ragba can come off a little haphazard at times, but here this is very nuanced. It doesn't hit you all at once. It kind of dances in the air. The way the sillage moves around is very elegant, but it is kind of a caramelized, sweeter, almost delicious smelling oud. Again, that's not overly sweet. There's a lot more going on than that, but that's all we have time for. We're gonna move on to the next one. This is Golden Oud from Amarud. We do have a Middle Eastern brand here. This is one that is more on the high end. They're called Arij Al Amirat, and this fragrance is called Sapphire Royal oud this stuff is so elegant it's also a bit unique it is a musky oud there's this softness there's this rounded quality to it it hangs in the air in a sensual way a little ambery but not overly so and there's this interesting green quality to it that almost smells reminiscent of a fougere imagine a fougere meeting kind of an ambery oud fragrance with musk smells expensive Again, not super cheap. I wanna say you're gonna pay at least 200 bucks for a bottle of this. Hopefully they have samples on the site. If they do, I'll link to what I can find down below. But this is a lovely brand and a very, very easy take on Oud, honestly, but the Oud is a little bit more upfront here, I will say, especially compared to like the Oud Symphony from Precious Liquid. Anyway, check it out. This final fragrance in the intrigue category is rich. There's a fruitiness here. There's a warm, spicy quality. And the oud is a little edgy, slightly funky leaning, but still smells so elegant. From Oman Luxury, we have Zafar. Oh man, this is dark, but sweet, mouth-watering, almost cotton candy-like feel. There's like maybe saffron and apple. There's lots of rose in here. I forgot to mention that rose is a note you'll commonly see paired with oud. They just go together so beautifully. And it's here in the forefront. Lots of incense in here, a bit of a smoky feel, some warm spices like cinnamon and beautiful vanilla and amber in the dry down along with that oud. Complex smelling, fairly easy to wear, but again, has a touch of an edge to it. Get a sample if you can. I'll link to Zafar down below. I got it from Max Aroma. Check it out. And finally, our enthusiast category. This one is fairly oud forward, but there's a lot of other things going on that make it a very unique fragrance. I haven't smoked anything quite like this. It's quite expensive, so don't blind buy a bottle, please. From Nishane, we have Nefs. This is oud and rose, but beautiful spicy saffron, sweet sticky honey, juicy fruity, Fig. So there is this rich, succulent, juicy sweetness surrounded by this opulent rose that is definitely on the fresh floral side and underscored by that rich oud that's a little funky, but it's kind of shrouded by everything else, honestly, with some whiskey and vanilla. Oh man, this is luxurious stuff. This is elegant. It smells expensive and it's not going to be for everyone. It's a very particular scent profile. So sample first. That is Nefs from Nishane. From Raja Parfum, who is known for their oud collection, I couldn't tell you if they're all the most natural oud, but they do smell very expensive and they are very expensive. So check it out at your own discretion. This one I'm talking about is called United Arab Emirates. This is a gorgeous aromatic oud rose. Artemisia brings this slightly fresh herbal quality to it, but ultimately it is spicy. There's cloves in here bringing a warm, sultry spiciness to it alongside that ambery oud rose. It is sweet, it is woody, it is a little fresh, and it smells wealthy. Beautiful nuance, the way it hangs behind you as you walk is just 
alluring, it's intoxicating, and again, it smells like you spent a lot of money on it. So if you want to dress to impress and wear something that goes with what you got on, this is something to consider wearing. That is Raja Parfum United Arab Emirates. And the final fragrance. In the first category, we had the cheapest fragrance in this video. And in this category, we have the most expensive fragrance in this video. Smells like an utterly natural oud. If you're asking me, again, I can't confirm that it is, but it smells like it. From Fragrance to Bois. Sara, also known as Sara Oud. Now this fragrance easily can go for almost a thousand dollars. Do not buy a bottle of this without sampling it first. It's very expensive and I cannot condone you just going out and buying it. <sighs> it's hard to describe here. It is so congealed. The blend here is so high quality. It's so nuanced. I get almost a cotton candy, ambery sweetness. The rose is a little jammy. The oud is a little bit medicinal, but soft and smooth. It's deep and rich, but honestly, it's not quite as dark as it smells. I was actually surprised when I first smelled this, it was not as dark as I was expecting. It has almost no edges to it, completely round, smooth, rich, elegant, hangs in the air beautifully, beautiful sillage, great longevity if you're looking for that. Smells like money as far as oud goes, but please get a sample first and even that sample is not going to be cheap, so don't get mad saying that well, even the sample's not cheap. Well, then don't buy it. That's fine, but if you're truly interested, know that even a decant is going to cost a little bit of money. It'll cost some bread, so be ready for that. That is Sara Oud from Fragrance du Bois. I want to know what you think of these oud fragrances I've talked about. Again, there are too many others that I did not mention here. I acknowledge that. So if you want to list the ones that you like that were not here in the comments, please, by all means, do so. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.